We kick off today's program with uh, Michelle Sikirka talking all about women in leadership. President Michelle is the president and CEO of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, Steve. Thanks so much. Great to be back with you today. It's always good to have you. Listen, we have some other interviews with very prominent uh, leaders who uh, happen to be women. I've asked you this before, but I got to do it again. Women in leadership versus leadership. What's the difference? Well, you know, look, hey, we're still coming a long way, baby. Uh, <laughs> we see many more women in leadership roles, but we have to continue with intention to pay attention to lifting women up who have the skill sets uh, to be in the C-suite in the boardroom. And that's what we try to do at NJBIA through our efforts. My colleague, Mary Gamba, who co-hosts Lessons in Leadership with me, and I talk about this all the time, I've seen her become a much better negotiator in the 20 plus years we've been working together. She makes it clear what she wants and needs and why, and that, frankly, without threatening, what happens if it doesn't happen? Why is it, is it more difficult in general for women to negotiate effectively than men? I think we just didn't pay attention to it historically. You know, women are by nature consensus builders and we're very trusting. And so when we bring something to the table, we think whatever we're saying in the first instance is exactly how it is, right? Why should we have to go back and negotiate for it? And I think we learned over time uh, that that's just not how the game is played. Uh, and so again, this is just about being a little intentional, um, you know, making sure that you've got your uh, your information straight, always being prepared and confident, knowing what you want to achieve, but recognizing that uh, when you go in, you may have to take a different stance on how you approach ultimately getting to where you want to be. You know, uh, that's very helpful to, for, to a lot of folks. And one of the things we also talked about in that podcast, if you will, that I want to talk about here is you, you came up with an expression that I've stolen from you, but of course, quote, you know what it is? Noise free and 23. <laughs> We, we share our brains sometimes. He said to me, he said, we need to be noise free in 23. And it's just sticking with me. Talk about it, please. Yeah, it's the whole idea of staying, staying focused. Uh, there is just too much noise in this world. My analogy, we all love the peanuts. You think of pig pen, right? When he walked around, he had all that little dust around him. That's our noise. Each and every one of us has our own noise that affects us. Oh, yeah, the cell phone. Is this noise? Example. Is this noise? Absolutely. 100%. Well, we tell ourselves we have to multitask. We tell ourselves it's got to be right with us. He tell us, tells our, tell ourselves we have to do, what's the problem with that? Yeah, I, I learned somewhat the hard way during COVID that multitasking isn't a really good thing. How many times I was on a Zoom call and I had this uh, trusty little friend next to me and um, all of a sudden I'm in the middle of a meeting. I have no idea what's going on. And I'm like, wow, Michelle, like get back in the game. You gotta, you gotta stay, stay focused, keep your eye on the prize, right? And understand mm -hmm. what's going on in the moment. Be in the moment, be present, as we say, Steve. You know, and the other thing that is so important that I want you to share with folks, which is a policy question, it's also a societal question, a business question as well. You, you talk a lot about childcare and we have our series and the graphic will come up, reimagine childcare. You have been a leader in the childcare movement talking about the impact, the adverse impact of not having affordable, quality, accessible child care disproportionately for women in the workforce, please. Well, we, we saw that super pronounced at the beginning of COVID and frankly, too far into COVID where, where women were left on the sidelines because we continue to be the traditional, you know, first person lead when it comes to child care. We saw that our inability to get our child care facilities up and running quickly held our women back from getting back into employment, whether it meant virtual or getting back to the office. Look, we can't be good workers if our children aren't in safe environments. Uh, that goes for anyone, men and women, but unfortunately it did have a disproportionate impact on working women. Uh, so we did, right at the beginning, we stood up from a policy perspective and we, we worked with our, our legislative leaders on making sure that we were addressing these issues. And we're, we're very proud of some of the movement in this space, including increased earned income tax credit. Really Explain the earned, I'm sorry for interrupting, Michelle. Explain the earned income tax credit. The, the phrase is used a lot. The program is used a lot. Not many know what it is, please. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's money back for certain people who are eligible at a certain level of wages um, in order to get a tax credit back that they then can use for things like their child care. It's, it's significantly important. Mm. Michelle, I know we're talking about women in leadership, but uh, again, when I talk to you, policy uh, creeps into the conversation, and you know that um, we're very interested in public policy and the public policy around the corporate 
the state corporate tax. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be booking a fair number of progressive, and I don't mean that in a pejorative way, but left-leaning progressive leaders who argue that the governor, Governor Murphy, particularly in a state, in, state of the state and beyond, um, particularly afterwards, that he talked about um, the corporate tax and changes that need to be made. And we've taxed business enough for right now. And we need to, is it a, is it a moratorium? Is he ending it? What is he doing? And there were a lot of progressive liberal leaders are saying that the governor is abandoning that agenda and favoring, quote, the business community, you say. I say that addressing corporate business tax, starting with sunsetting the surcharge of 2.5%, which Explain is- what it is. Explain what yeah. it is right now. Well, right now it's 11.5%, okay? Um, there was a 2.5% surcharge, okay, that is supposed to sunset. It was supposed to sunset over two years ago. Um, but that was during COVID. And so we said, all right, we'll be patient. We'll wait another two years. And it's supposed to sunset the end of this year. That's a promise made, promise kept, right? A surcharge was, it's a temporary increase. Promise made, promise kept, okay? We believe that is going to be the case. The governor has publicly said that he believes that we should allow that to sunset. That's step one though, Steve, because our, our neighbor to the West, Pennsylvania, who eats our lunch many days on the business affordability climate uh, perspective, right? Um, they now have a five-year plan to drive their corporate business tax down from 9% to below 5%. And they're a leading competitor, and Connecticut is looking at the same thing. Let me say one more thing on this, okay? We have data coming out, and we have statistics that show that decreasing corporate business tax is beneficial to every stakeholder. New Jersey residents, the workforce, labor, across the board. As long as you have guardrails in place, we're not saying rip $600 million out of the budget. What we're saying is when you bring this down, other things go up, including wages. And this is the case that we are going to be making over the next year on why we should take on comprehensive corporate business tax reform for the long term. Got a minute left. I'm going to do this. Uh, I've had interesting discussions with the governor. Check out our uh, September, I think it was September 2022 interview with the governor, uh, and I asked him about this, and he had a very clear response. I said, Governor, we're clearly losing people to Florida and other southern states, Florida not having an income tax. And he said, Steve, the statistics don't bear that out. And ironically, I just saw some stats that we, that he may be right, and I may be wrong on that. Are we losing people with higher incomes to southern states, other states? Over the last 15 years, consistent trends Okay, the loss of adjustable gross income. We are at over 15 years, $33 billion lost adjusted gross income out of the state of New Jersey. Yes, that's people moving with their wallets. Okay, that is money that is not being spent in this economy. All right, that's money not supporting philanthropy in the state of New Jersey. That's people moving with their wallets. Now, a lot of people want to argue that we're not seeing the demographic shift so much. I do want to remind us that we are still the number one out migrator of 18 to 34 year olds, which is our future workforce. So two things to watch, the out migration of adjusted gross income that shows the movement of our affluence and our money out of the state and the continued movement of those 18 to 34 year olds, which is our future workforce. Michelle Sikirka, President and Chief Executive Officer of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Thank you, Michelle. As always, a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Steve. You got to stay with us. We'll be right back. Nurses, you rise to the challenge every day. We see you and stand with you. Your scientists, healers, rock star nurses, you give 100%, then find 50% more. For health systems to work, it takes nurses. And for 125 years, we've championed your innovation and grit. And like you, we'll never stop. Also brought to you by RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Johnson & Johnson. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. Here when you need us most. Valley Bank. NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. PSE&G, committed to providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. PSEG Foundation. And by the Russell Berry Foundation, making a difference.